Hey, this is Mad Matt from Budget Boosting, and today we're going to talk about intercoolers. Intercoolers. We'll walk around and look at some intercoolers, and uh, well, this car here, 1986 Nissan 300ZX Turbo, never came with an intercooler because, frankly, look around the Z, you're like, uh, where the hell am I going to put this intercooler? I mean, I had to find a spot to put this intercooler on this car because from the factory, okay, you could probably try to stick it in the, in the front bumper, but look at the front of the car. The factory really didn't give you a lot of factory air inlets. So you got this tiny little air inlet that gives air to the radiator to try to cool the car down. I even put another extra air duct in there because there's so little air that goes in this engine bay. Every bit helps. So. I kind of took the approach of putting the intercooler between the engine and the radiator because I was able to access everything without cutting or making any cuts to the car to put the intercooler tubing and the intercooler in and I was able to fabricate you know bracketing to hold the intercooler up and it's pretty much a straight straight up approach but a lot of factory stuff had to be removed or relocated in order to encompass this because the factory right here is all air cleaner right here. They have all these air cleaner boxes and air filters. This whole place is cluttered with air filter. And after the air filter is taken out, there's this huge duct that takes this whole space away. And there's a huge radiator shroud and a huge mechanical fan which I took all that out because I wanted to go electric fan for one because the mechanical fan took up all this space and pretty much with the electric fan you eliminate a lot of unnecessary stuff and you make yourself room for all this extra equipment. Room for intake, room for intercooler, room for tubing and it takes a lot of clutter out of the car. Now we're going to look at this other 300 ZX Turbo here that I have not done an intercooler to and it still has a stock turbo. I just took a lot of the factory stuff out so you can take a peek at what the factory did. Here's the factory turbocharger here. And they just took the pipe and went from straight to the turbo straight to the throttle body. So the factory had no intentions in putting an intercooler here. They just said, okay, we're going to go straight to the intake of the engine. Which is simple, yes. And if you don't run much boost, it's not that big of a deal, but all the air you're getting from here to here is extremely hot. And the heat takes away a lot of power making potential. So basically, we had some comments asking us how to put an intercooler on a Z31 or a 1984 through 88 300 ZX Turbo. And uh, basically, the simple answer is, you just have to take out a lot of factory stuff out of the way to make room because the factory just puts so much clutter here. I mean, the factory has clutter. No kidding. This whole area is just full with clutter. So, there's a lot of stuff that I didn't need, like I didn't need air conditioning. I didn't need power steering for this car. So, my engine is just running the water pump and the alternator and I got the crank pulley. That's it. Um, the air conditioning, air pump, and power steering pump, and they had a bunch of other clutter taking this whole area. It was all removed in this car, which makes a lot more room for an intercooler. So, uh, one way to do it would be cut right here. You could even leave the factory pipe here, smooth this out, and cut that off. Put an elbow to go to your intercooler. Then, make a curve come back and lead to your throttle body. That would be the easy approach. Now, there's some companies out there that they sell on eBay. They make full intercooler kits for these cars, but you're going to have to cut some holes because, as you can see, I took the headlights out here just to show you. There's no, with the headlight here, there's no room. Here's the headlight. No room for intercooler tubing. Because if you put the intercooler in the front, you have to find a way to get the tubes here and back. The only way I could think of is there's some space above here. There's some space 
that you could probably run tubes to and from the intercooler. But I picked this method because pretty straightforward. And once I got everything out of the way, it mounted fine here. There is a factory car too that put intercoolers here. The uh, 92 through 99-2000 Mazda RX-7, the FD RX-7, they had the intercooler here. And it's pretty simple to route. I just bought a regular universal fit everything kind of an intercooler and a universal intercooler piping kit. And I just picked curves and made cuts till I fabricate to fit. So I pretty much went from the turbocharger. So you can see where I went from the turbocharger starting here. Curved here under the intercooler. You can see, look under the intercooler where I ran a tube all the way across and followed it, curved around again, and lead all the way back to my intake. So pretty much from the turbo, underneath, to the intercooler, then back into the intake. I just used regular universal intercooler kit. There's companies on eBay that sell the full bolt-on kit that is designed to fit these Z31 turbos. There's kits out there, but they're kind of up there, three to four hundred dollars. Um, you can find them and save a lot of you know work because they've already done the work for you. Just bolt them on in, or like me, just uh, get a, a universal intercooler kit for about forty bucks. Universal intercooler for about you know fifty or so, forty fifty or so. So for about around a hundred dollars, make your own intercooler kit. It fits and it cools that boosted air before it goes in the intake. And, uh, well, there you have it. Now, this car never had an intercooler. I'm going to show you another car that I owned that never had an intercooler from the factory. This one also wasn't turbocharged. I did a full custom turbo conversion on this 1979 Nissan 280ZX. Here's this 1979 custom 280ZX custom turbo. And you can see what I did here is I just went from the turbocharger right from the turbo's compressor. I picked another universal turbo intercooler piping kit. I went to this elbow here and it had this nice little tube that I already got from another kit and had a blow-off valve built on it. Cool for the blow-off valve fans. I just put that right there because I had it and it was a perfect uh, addition for the bend I was looking for so I put it in there. And the tube comes down, goes into the intercooler here, goes through the intercooler, makes another curve. See, I had to cut holes in this because, see, I had to cut holes where there was holes not there. See, I had to cut a hole down here. See where I cut? I made a cut because the factory didn't really have a good way to get to and from the intercooler, so I had to make a cut here, come around, go into the intercooler, come around again, Go this tubing across and go to my intake. So most of intercooling is being creative. It's kind of like making something, making a painting, making a, a sculpture. You're trying to make something work of a box of parts. Now there's companies on eBay that sell bolt-on intercooler kits for the Z cars, even this body style. But they charge anywhere from 250 to you know, two fifty to about five hundred dollars for a no kidding bolt on, as you are intercooler kit. I decided to make my own because I want an extremely large Nissan Skyline GTR intercooler. So I went a different route. I pretty much removed the factory bumper and put on a fiberglass bumper and just kind of built everything around the intercooler because I like the big intercooler. So I just went a different way. But being creative is how you put intercoolers on cars that never came with them. 280ZX Turbo, 300ZX Turbo, and someday this 300ZX Turbo is also going to have an intercooler. And I'll probably do it differently than I did this 300ZX. I'll think of something else more imaginative. I'll come up with another idea that I like and make it work. So there you have it. Intercooling on a budget on cars that never came with intercoolers. So, thanks for watching us at Budget Boosting. 
If you like us, like us on Facebook, like us on our YouTube page, subscribe to our YouTube page, our budgetboosting.com website, explore it, check out everything on it, enjoy it, watch our videos. We finally hit like 50 videos, so hey, watch them up, watch them up and catch up and you learn a little something from every one of our videos. And remember our budget boosting stickers? Please get them. They're great. They look great on any car, especially a performance boosted car. So, And like always, the knowledge on this is power. It's horsepower. There's a lot of misconceptions out there because some people just pull the dipstick, stick, the dipstick on the automatic transmission and go, hey, I'm full. But as soon as you start the engine, it spins the transmission and the torque converter, the fluid level will drop significantly because you could see a full dipstick with your engine off then you turn the engine you can see nothing on it that's the difference between checking your engine hot and engine running for your ATF automatic transmission fluid 